Good morning, everybody. Hi, John. Thanks, Katie. Good morning. Thank you. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, wow, that was pretty good. So, thank you, everyone, for coming to FlowCon 2015. Welcome to Portland. I'd like to get us started. I am now. Uh, I don't even like to hear myself talk about these logistical things, so I'm not going to keep you guys too long before we get into the fun parts of the conference. We've got a really good program for you guys today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Um, so welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We have a really great set of sponsors this year, and we really appreciate everybody. Um, Cloud Helix, HP, ThreatStream, Fortinet, Napatech, Emulex, Tintree, Codonomicon, ESVA, Accolade, Cisco, GovPro IT. It's a lot of folks. Um, thank you all. Thank you for all of your help. Thank you to all the folks who have done all of the hard work to get me up here right now. Um, so Kunta and Marianne, Linda and Katie are all at the desk. Kara's doing all of the communication stuff. Mike, Jacobs, thank you very much for being my co-chair. Um, Sid Faber, thank you very much. Donovan. Donovan is the one that everyone forgets about because he does actually so much work so well that no one remembers that he's even done it. Um, Dom and Jeff in the back, thanks for all the recording. Corey, the PSAV guys. Ken in the back, thank you. I know you guys don't like to be in the camera too much, but this is really important. I appreciate all of that. Rich, Roman, Paul, all of the SEI front office folks for all of your support. Thank you all very much. So couple of little logistics. If you were in the early morning Linux training session yesterday, please go to the uh, training desk and sign in so that we can get you all of the right stuff. Um, if you guys need to have more private meetings, we have those. Talk to the folks at the registration desk. This is the important piece of logistics. This is how to get to the social tonight. It is at 6.30 at the punch bowl. It is, as you can see, it's very far away. It's three blocks. Um, we will be leaving the hotel lobby in small gaggles starting at about 6.20. Um, so we'll have some of the staff to lead in case anyone wanders off and doesn't turn left the one time. Uh, for the speakers, please meet in the back of the room 10 minutes before your session starts so you can meet everyone, make sure you know how to do all the mic logistics, do all the recording stuff. Uh, hopefully this doesn't happen, but it's important to make sure that you guys all know. There are obviously three exit signs. I know you guys can all read. What you cannot see is that there's also an exit sign behind this black backdrop behind us. So the people in the back of the room, it's probably faster to leave that way. If the fire alarm goes off, the people in the front of the room probably want to punch through this velvet wall and go to the left. As a reminder, this is the first time we're recording sessions for FlowCon which is really exciting. We are not posting live. So if you do say something dumb, we can go excise that from the record as if it never happened. <laughs> However, try to avoid that. <laughs> um, if the speaker has opted out of video recording, which I don't think anyone has, we'll announce that at the beginning of the session so everyone knows. Please uh, make use of all your social medias. All the kids these days I hear are doing these things. Um, so this is our Twitter handle, our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, our carrier pigeon address. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to keep us up very much longer, but we do have a very special welcome to Portland from Juan Garza from AppCon. So if you could come up here, make sure you guys know all of the smart things to do in Portland while you're here, all of the important parts of the conference, right, the ones that aren't in this room. And thank you all very much. If you have any questions, please find me or Mike or any of the folks at the registration desk. We'll be happy to help you. All of the SEI folks know where to find us if you can't. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Juan Garza, and um, welcome to Portland. I've been asked to uh, summarize uh, Portland for you in 15 minutes, which is a bit of a challenge. So what I've done is I've put together some, um, I guess, key highlights of uh, key things you would want to hit if you have a span of about a couple of days or a week. How many of you first time in Portland? Wow, good. So um, I'll cover a lot of the uniqueness here in these next couple of slides. How many of you are staying through the weekend? Nobody, no takers. A couple. All right. 
So I'll really go fast in the back part of the presentation, which is meant for extended stays or if you ever come back here. So by way of introduction, I'm Juan Garza. I'm Director of uh, Professional Services at AppCon. We are a local company. We've uh, been fully headquartered and uh, stationed out of uh, the Portland area for 20 years. Privately held, we do network monitoring switch technology. We'll have space in the uh, demo room if you want to learn more about AppCon, we'll be there. Uh, Carolyn Poltel is out here, and uh, she'll be happy to address any questions there as well. So we'll get right to it. And uh, first off is you are right in the heart of all of the cool things that are going on as far as all the cool Portland stuff. You are right smack in the middle. There's a bunch of stuff uh, right nearby. In addition, you are one block away from uh, the Max station. It's a local uh, light rail that takes you up and down Portland. And I believe it's still uh, duty free if you stay within the, um, the immediate area of downtown. So you can basically hop a one block, hop a train, go up and down and see a bunch of stuff. There's a unique things going on. Uh, Portland State University is in that general direction. You'll see a lot of other university oriented things. We're gonna talk about food carts in a little bit. That's a very unique Portland cuisine, uh, which is basically anything you want in a one square block with mini restaurants serving you food over the counter there. We'll talk about that. Uh, Pioneer Courthouse is right, basically the epicenter of the city and where people get together for events, especially in the summer and so forth. So again, more information and links are throughout the presentation which will be available to you. Then another um, big congregation point is a waterfront park, and that's uh, kind of where all the joggers are, bike riders, a lot of summer events, summer festivals. I'll talk about one in particular uh, that happens uh, in July. And, um, and then a couple of other key things. Powell's books. Uh, if anyone, anyone of you read or like books? Okay. I will show you the, uh, the mecca of bookstores. That's only a couple of blocks away. You can either head down, take a nice little walk from here, or head down the uh, Mac station, a couple of uh, stops down. You'll be even closer. Then another uh, key district downtown is called the Pearl District. And what that is is just a, uh, it's about a six, I don't know, eight by eight square block area just loaded with uh, bars, restaurants, a lot of art. They have a lot of art galleries for Thursdays, those types of things. And then a couple of other key stops. Uh, there's a, I saw it out there, it's a Voodoo Donut. If you want the most Portland, unique kind of Portland kind of experience, you'd have to go to the actual store, but you can taste the donuts out there. There's a box out there. And then there's an Oregon Duck store. I hear they're running a sale after last, last night's uh, game. <laughs> uh, didn't go so well for them. A full disclosure, I'm originally from Texas. Uh, I've been here 10 years, so my uh, duck wasn't in that fight in particular. Um, and then the Chinese garden is also right nearby, and some of the other stuff is a little further out. So just again, it's all right around you. I know you have a busy session, but, but here we go. Voodoo Donut, if there's one unique uh, culinary kind of uh, Portland experience, I'd say just go there line up, there's always a line, and uh, once you're in line, you start kind of taking in what is the Portland counterculture, Grateful Dead meets forest hippie kind of thing that happens here, and it, it is culminated with these donuts. This, uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, anybody familiar with that? He's a, well, he was there once, and uh, what they claimed in the show is that they actually got a uh, letter from the FDA for putting Pepto-Bismol in the donuts. And it's illegal to sell over-the-counter drugs and food products. But they proudly put that up as an uh, act of accomplishment. So that's the kind of experience you'll see there. Here's the bookstore, Powell City of Books. It's an entire city block, three stories, any type of technical fiction, nonfiction kind of topic, they'll have it there. They used to have a, or they may still have a whole technical book section, so ask them if you're more interested in the technical stuff, but anything technical and so forth. They also have daily events. A lot of uh, authors come by there almost on a daily basis. Any of you see the movie Fight Club? 
So the author is actually a Portland uh, author. His name is Chuck Polonik. And I think he'll be there Wednesday doing one of the events. So anybody interested in that? Food carts. So that's become kind of the rage here in Portland. And what these are is just carts that look like these. At first, it's like, well, they look kind of shabby. Should I eat from these places? And the answer is yes. Uh, a lot of uh, what becomes really well-known restaurants here in town actually start off as food carts now. It's really low rent kind of space for these people to try their culinary arts. And you can just go booth to booth and go anything from New York st or Chicago style pizza to authentic Vietnamese to Japanese to one time I stopped there and got a New York style sandwich that was as authentic as anything I've tried. And there's a two um, food carts uh, right close to here. They're marked in the map I showed. So you can go back to that first map in the slides distributed and try that out. And again, it, uh, the only downside is you won't get sit-down waiter service or anything, but to try stuff, especially if you're on a, on a time budget, off you go. Other things to try out, there is a Chinese garden that's not far from here. It's actually pretty renowned in that it was built by Chinese workers in 1999. 40,000 square foot area with a really authentic, you know, uh, kind of Chinese, uh, they call it soju style garden. It has a tea house, you can go there, relax, take it all in. But again, they brought in a huge amount of uh, actual wood, actual rocks from the homeland, from the sister city in Shouzhou, China. And again, very uh, close to here, not far from uh, Voodoo Donuts. It, a little further out, those that have cars, anybody here have cars? So uh, that's, this is a little further out, but it's something that's uh, really well known, especially for people that are into gardens. I'm not into gardens, but I'm told that uh, this is one of the more unique, authentic Japanese gardens outside of Japan. And it's a full five acres, and it's got five distinct garden styles with different philosophies. And it also builds in the uh, Portland native woods into this Japanese style garden. It's a very unique area, very relaxing, very, very cool. Then, not for this time of year, but another garden is the Rose Garden. This is the Rose City. And this was started back in 1900 when they thought uh, some strands of roses would disappear during World War I. So they started this kind of collection. And it's become the oldest official, continuously operated public rose test garden in the United States. 7,000 different uh, rose bushes are there. But now it's not prime time. But again, if you come back, that's kind of one of the key stops in that um, in the summertime, it's just pretty amazing. Just beautiful weather and then you know, walk in these gardens, kind of free flowing and so forth. If it's a clear day, again, you might need a car for this one. Um, if it's a clear day and you want the shot of the uh, city line, uh, Piddock Mansion is uh, kind of situated like, a, I think it's a thousand feet above. And uh, it's a French Renaissance, French Renaissance style chateau. Uh, originally built for the Oregonian publisher. It's a 22-room estate. It's not so much the uh, mansion itself, which is actually under repair, but it's uh, that you get these amazing uh, panoramic views of the city uh, from this mansion. So it's really cool when it's a nice, clear day. And not only will you see Mount Hood, you'll probably see uh, uh, some of the other mountains like Rainier and so forth, all from there. Plus, uh, it has access to some of the local trails. Uh, Forest Park's one of the largest uh, inbound uh, forests in the country, and you have uh, access to all the trails from Piddock Mansion. So it's really strategically located for that. And for those interested in bird watching, uh, I hear that this is the place to go. That's where I know nothing about bird watching, but again, I'm told about these things. Anybody like beer? Yeah. Okay. You are here. This is the epicenter. This is it. I mean, as far as uh, beer goes, I'd put Portland up against uh, just about any place. I've been to Germany, Czech Republic, England, all the Belgium uh, beer kind of places. And what strikes me about Portland is more the variety in that they are very experimental here with the beers. 
and also there's a big congregation of lots of breweries. I think there's one of 60 breweries, which is more than any one city um, in the world, really. Uh, so you'll get a lot of variety, and the two ways to approach this is that you can go to a, a brewery such as Deschutes, one of the famous ones. I'll list a couple of them in another slide, and you can get a tasting. And again, it's like a, what's different here versus other places like Czech Republic, you get the Pilsners. Here, you get a variety. They'll try, they'll have a stout, a Pilsner. IPAs are kind of the uh, local uh, flavor in that they're really hoppy and that we have access to some of the best hops in the world in the northwest area from here to Washington. So they just load that in the beers and that's where you get a lot of IPA style beers here. Plus, if anyone comes back in the summer, there's an event, uh, it's called Brewer Fest. It's the last full weekend of July, and you'll have about 86 of these individual breweries all serving their beer of choice, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people show up for this. And it's uh, quite the festival. You throw, throw a lot of beer, perfect weather, summertime, and uh, it's a good time. So definitely you can always come back and uh, you won't be able to taste all of them in one week, I'll promise you that. I've been here 10 years, I'm still scratching the surface. So I put together a list of uh, nearby bars and restaurants. If you want just uh, one quick one that's one block away, South Park Seafood is really good. It's right close to the uh, theater district and it'll give you a lot of options for local fish and it'll have brews on tap, full, fully stocked bar, all those things. For the more upscale or hipster kind of thing, Nel Centro is pretty well known. It's a few blocks from here as well. More traditional one is a Higgins restaurant and bar. Higgins is, I guess, uh, go, has a long history here in Portland. Their actual dish is a traditional turkey dinner, but it's really good. But you, there you'll catch a lot more of the local history. And if you want a one-stop shop to a massive amount of variety of beers, and it's a, fully, um, it's a full restaurant as well, Henry's 12th Street Tavern, right close to Powell's Books, they have a beer menu that's like uh, six or eight pages, not just of the local brews, but international brews, and I think it's 100 plus uh, brews on tap. So that's your one-stop shop if you just want to sample anything from anywhere, and not just Portland. But if you want, do want to hit a couple of the what's a Portland style brewery, I'd put these three that are in the area. Uh, Deschutes, Rogue, and Bridgeport Brewing. Mainly because of location, there's a, a lots of others. Uh, but these are kind of within reach here. And they'll give you a real good taste of uh, what Oregon Northwest style beers are all about. Just ask for the taster if you want a sample or ask him for what, what's your best IPA if you like the hoppy stuff. And then if you want uh, links to the Pearl District, uh, explorethepearl.com. That'll have a whole list of other options within Pearl District. And again, it's uh, shopping, restaurants, bars, just about everything's down there. Other uniquely Portland things to do, again, on a clear day, uh, bike tours. Uh, it's known, uh, this city is kind of a bicycle town. There's some neighborhoods here where you're, there's literally bikes everywhere. I mean, a rush hour and in the mornings, people commute to work with bikes in some neighborhoods a lot. Uh, but you can also do uh, pedal tours around some of the bridges. A couple of the bridges are pedestrian only. So here you can uh, rent a couple of bikes. I've listed a couple of area, uh, two stops where you can rent a bike, uh, grab one and tour around town. You can start off Waterfront Park and just make your way through the bridges and so forth. Or if you want to get a little more experimental, there's a brew cycle that you'll see around. It looks like this, and you can actually drink while pedaling your way around downtown. But uh, there's a link if you want to get a little adventurous. I don't know what the drinking and driving policy is for that, <laughs> but you might have a guided tour. Then, this is more obscure. Has anyone heard of the term getting shanghai Okay. Uh, Rumor has it that people were shanghai here in Portland. That means that they would be in a bar, you know, like a, say, 1800s, turn of the century type of time frame. They'd have one too many, get knocked out, dragged into these underground tunnels, and thrown into slave labor on these ships. Well, I've taken this tour, Carolyn has taken this tour as well, 
and uh, there are these underground tunnels in uh, some spots downtown, and there's guided tours that'll take you around. And they're built under these restaurants, and uh, you'll see uh, a lot of unique stuff down there. Again, this is a little more into the macabre and stuff, but uh, you can explore that. But definitely a very unique uh, flavor for historical things that exist down there. Uh, sports, uh, I guess I, it was too late to take this guy out, but uh, they had a good run. So Northwest just has, Portland in particular, has very unique sports teams. Um, NBA, there's a game on Wednesday. If anyone wants to catch the Blazers, the uh, Clippers are in town. And you might see uh, the dancing former head of uh, Microsoft show up here as well. Uh, Timbers, it's an MLS club here in Portland. Um, they go nuts. This is the Timbers Army. Uh, they don't get started till end of January, so if you ever come back during MLS season or you follow your own team, definitely uh, worth catching a game. The spirit, the vibe is just really intense. And um, if you ever want to see real intense sports kind of event, uh, watch Seattle when they come play the Timbers. And uh, yeah, it gets pretty animated. Um, the Timbers Army has their own section, and I'd recommend sitting there, but just don't bring your kids. There's some, a lot of four letter words going on there. Um, so we won't touch too much on what's around Portland, but just so you know, there's a lot. Uh, you can come back and spend weeks exploring different areas. Uh, we have a wine country. There are, Type of wine of choice is the Pinot Noir, uh, but there's other different types of flavors, but the Pinot Noir in particular w grows really well. There's a link so you can look at all the different wineries. It's a little more, um, how should we say, not as accessible as say wine country in Napa Valley, but you can go through the list and find out which wineries are open. And just to make sure you're, the, they won't be closed or anything. If you want one shot outside of Portland, it's only 45 minutes. Multnomah Falls, Columbia River Gorge is absolutely uh, breathtaking as far as scenery. I'll talk about that. Um, if anybody has time for skiing, Mount Hood's a one hour away. It's basically right here. It's a standalone mountain, so you just have to watch out for wind or fog. So just look at the weather advisory on the, on the link there. And then uh, the Oregon coast, basically one hour this way, you, you can go skiing, one hour that way, and you're in the ocean. And Oregon coast is just, uh, just as stunning, really. Uh, Ecola State Park, Seaside, Cannon Beach are some of the ones that are right off of this uh, Highway 26 in either direction there. And then uh, this is a little further out of the way, but uh, Mount St. Helens, where is it? It's uh, up here. Northwest, we would take I-5 and then break out this way. So this is a full day to go see it. And typically you want to go on a clear day, so typically more in the summer. But now it would be kind of out of the way to just go see that. It might be fogged over this time of year. So um, that's more of a summer kind of thing. Uh, so Oregon Coast, uh, what's so cool about it is it looks like this, or at least the postcards say it looks like this. But if you go there, it'll more likely look like that. But it's still really cool. The, the fog, just the whole um, kind of scenery you get out of it, it's still really nice. It's not where you'll see, uh, you know, beach wear and bikinis and things like this. It's more like people wearing coats because it's kind of cold down there. But it's still really stunning. And, you know, you just sit in front of the ocean, take it all in. It's uh, really nice. A lot of hikes and stuff around there. The Columbia River Gorge, as I said, that's going the other way. It's about an 80-mile stretch of canyon with some uh, drop-offs that are as much as 4,000 feet. Uh, so really stunning panoramic views with the Columbia River going right through it. Washington on one side, Oregon on the other. It's a natural uh, boundary between the two states. Uh, it's a federally protected national scenic area. And as far as the one postcard shot, it's right there, along there. It's called Multnomah Falls. You can just Google that. And uh, it's basically this really nice uh, waterfall, huge. And um, so you can learn more about it. A couple of links are posted there. And finally, uh, skiing. Uh, Mount Hood is only an hour away. Skihood.com if you want to learn more about um, what the weather conditions are like. Like I said, look out for wind and fog. 
And then for more Colorado type, uh, type skiing, that's more like four hours away. It's in Bend, Oregon. There's Mount Bachelor there, and that's more in the high desert. That's where you would get different kind of uh, skiing experience. But like I said, lots to do. Uh, and I think you guys have a full agenda outside of this. But just so you know, it is there. <laughs> and you can come back to it in case you don't get time for it this time. And if there's any questions, you can come find me or Carolyn. We'll be in the uh, demo room. And from this, I'll hand it off to Michael Collins to guide you through the first session. Thanks.